In this example, I want to show uh, how to, to actually start using video and processing. This is for live video, how to access the camera. This code will be available on GitHub, and I'm going to be working with this code to build some of the other sketches. Uh, a few things to keep in mind. Um, this is going to use the video library. So uh, here I've taken some code that's modified from learning processing. Um, there are a few things I noticed that need to be changed. Uh, OK, we'll import the video library. I want to make sure that you have in your, if you go to your library manager, that you have the most recent uh, video library update. I actually had an older one, and I had to update it before this works. So you just want to make sure it's it's checked green. Uh, you'll see like an update. Mine was, I think there was an orange circle there telling me that it wasn't, it wasn't working right. Uh, the next thing the next thing we're going to do is, is declare a capture object. So we talk about declaring and initializing. Um, in order to know what cameras are available, I, I need to uh, print this to the console, capture list. Uh, and that will tell me what's there. Uh, Inside the setup, we'll initialize the capture object. So we'll use the new operator, new capture. Um, this is just referring to this this sketch or this uh, this camera. Now, a few things here that we're looking at. Uh, I've set the size small because video can be kind of resource intensive. Uh, okay, so these are the resolution is much smaller. Um, when I printed this out, I was able to see what cameras I had. And maybe I'll start that. Uh, I'll run this right now so you can see. I'm gonna. Um, for the sake of kind of not distracting you, I'll turn off the displaying of the video, but I just want to show you where you can find out what cameras you have and how you can set that up because you will need to put the camera you want to use in quotes over here. So it's, it's really important that you grab that. So when I'm running it, you can see it's printing out to the console down here. Uh, I have snap camera, which is uh, you know an application I installed. I have FaceTime HD camera built in now it's a little bit confusing because there aren't commas here to, to uh, differentiate them. I also have this application called mm -hmm Camera. Uh, so I could access any of these, but I'm just going to use the FaceTime HD camera. So what I'll do is copy that uh, and you know go into, I'm going to stop that. Uh, here you want to specify what camera you have. Now this is something that's new uh, with the update, and I think this has to do uh, with Mac OS update. So I'm running this on a Mac. I'm not sure if this will be different uh, on a PC. I'm hoping it'll be similar, uh, but I haven't tested it yet. Uh, so here I, I've written the comment, put the camera you want in quotes, uh, and that will be one of the parameter or arguments here. Uh, we're going to initialize the capture object, and then we're going to start it. And we have this, this event here. Um, and there's, there's another way to do this in the draw, but what I, I think this is easy because you can just copy and paste this. It's a separate kind of function. It's a capture event. So you can copy and paste that. And you're just reading the image from the camera. Uh, so these are all the steps that we talked about. And then you want to display the video image. So let me comment this back in. Uh, you load the pixels up. And then we will, uh, just like using an image before, we're going to, uh, instead of calling that P image that we loaded, we're going to call it the video. And then we can place it on x, y coordinates. So let's just make sure that that's working. And again, my video is smaller just because it's, it's a little bit less resource intensive. My green light turns on, and here I am, and the video is working. So this is the first step, and we're going to build off of this and do a few other things. OK, so let's use the code that we had before and start to do uh, some image processing techniques similar to what we did with the image uh, section. Uh, what I want to do is, is go through and read the um, pixels array and, and grab the brightness or color values and then start to draw shapes with that. So I have the original sketch here. Uh, let's, let's think about what we need to do. Um, what I also want to do is I don't want to go through every single pixel. Uh, let's say if, if I want to draw like a grid, a, you know, square grids, like sort of a pixelated uh, type of image, I don't need to go through every single one. So what I'm going to do is uh, create a variable called cell size, uh, and this this will allow me to skip over uh, some of the pixels. So cell size. Uh, I'm also maybe want to make some columns and rows so I know how many I'm going to be uh, working towards. Uh, okay, and then in the setup, I want to grab. Uh, or I want to kind of figure out what the uh, the columns and rows are. So columns is going to equal to width of, divided by cell size. And we've done something like this before. Rows is equal to the height divided by cell size. So that gives me sort of equal, uh, sort of, uh, I guess, a, a gridded structure. Um, and then 
in the for loop here, I can go through and uh, count by the columns. So I'll do i is equal to zero while i is less than calls. Uh, and then I plus plus. So this lets us go through and advance. Uh, that's horizontally. For vertically, we want to go this way. J is less than rows. J plus plus. Okay. Um, now we talked about the x and the y position. Um, th this this loop right now is just going through the number of columns. So if I want to grab like the pixel value or the, the sort of the index, I need to have a, a value for x and the y, um, and that is really equal to i times cell size. Um, yeah, I think that should be good. I, because I want to center this, I'm, I might do um, plus cell size divided by two so that it's it's um, centered uh, and not just starting on the left hand side. Uh, so let me just, yeah, I'll write x position here and int y is equal to j times cell, cell size plus cell size divided by 2. Okay, so that's the y position. Uh, we've looked at this kind of uh, math before. If you want the, in, the array index, uh, you, you'll take x plus y times width, uh, and that should give us the pixel array location. And then we'll take, uh, we'll grab the color maybe. Um, now instead of image, uh, we can just do video pixels and grab that array like that, so that we grab that value. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Maybe the first thing I'm going to do is just draw a grid. Um, I actually want to end up doing something in 3D later. So I'm going to do push matrix and pop matrix and do a translate. Although you could probably do this without it. You could do rectangles and X and Y. That would probably would give you, uh, give you what you need. So let me just translate it by X and Y. And then what I'll do is, uh, let's see, I'll do fill C. Uh, I've grabbed that color up here, and maybe we'll start with a rectangle, zero, zero. I think cell size and cell size will work. And uh, because I want it to be centered, I, you know, I did the math up here. I think I'll set the rect mode to center. Uh, let's see, and then I want to pop matrix out of that. So again, I don't want these transformations to keep stacking. And I think that I'm just about there. Let's see if that works. Uh, so we have our video. It should be loading it. We should have a grid of rectangles. OK, there we go. So that's working. Uh, and if you, you know, you maybe you want to turn off the fill so or the stroke so it looks more, uh, whoops, more smooth. Here's, here's what that looks like. OK, and then Again, we can change the cell size. Right now, it's it's pretty small. It's 10, but you could make it 40. I think that will work. So we're just kind of showing what this looks like. And now it becomes even more abstract. OK, uh, let's keep going with it. Let's try to make this in 3D. Uh, I'm going to just undo this, go back to 10. Yeah, that, that looks OK. Um, so 3D mode. Let's turn this to P3D up here in the setup. Um, now we want to translate things uh, in the Z dimension. So, uh, well, we haven't set up a variable called Z. Uh, we probably should do that, and we should probably figure out how, how we want to do that. Um, we can use brightness. Um, so we'll use the brightness of the pixel, and we'll remap it. So that's why I'm starting with the map function. So let's take the brightness, and we'll, we'll grab that array again, pixels, LOC. Uh, and the brightness will go from 0 to 255. That's generally where it goes. And uh, let's make a range of things, maybe negative 100 to, um, uh, let's just make something big, 500 for right now. And let's see, that I think that should work. Um, let's see, I'm missing something, brightness. Oh, I'm missing a parentheses. Uh, what am I missing? Oh, the parentheses is here. And, oops, 
There we go. Okay, so now we're going to be in 3D space. These, there we go. These things are, <clears throat> they're moving around. Uh, you see, I actually am drawing the image beneath it, uh, the video, and then these things are um, being pushed around based on their brightness. It's a little bit crazy. Um, so maybe maybe I put too much on it. Uh, you know what I want to do now is like bring in some sine and maybe cosine or you know something like that. So I'm going to go back in and you know I'm going to bring in theta. So that will uh, let me start to uh, bring in a sine wave and maybe I'll I'll go here and I'll say uh, maybe that that was too much. So maybe 500 is too much. Uh, sine of theta times and, and again. The sine wave goes from negative one to one, so we want to multiply it by something. Uh, why don't we say 100 for now? Um, okay, and then we want to make sure that we're incrementing theta so that it looks like something is happening. Maybe we'll start with 0.01. Uh, <clears throat> okay, let's see what that looks like. So we're using sine wave here. There we go. So that sine wave is gently pushing things out, moving them, it, and then it's like kind of coalescing again. And it is, it's working on live video. So as I move around, right, it's gonna be moving with me. Um, okay, so let's, let's just keep playing. Maybe we'll comment this out. Maybe we wanna do circles instead. Um, and Oh, maybe we can make these things kind of pulsate or change in size. That could be something we play around with. So um, maybe we don't start right at cell size, but cell size divided by four plus um, maybe divided by two. Uh, and then we'll add sine of theta times, uh, we could do cell size. Maybe that's, that will give us something interesting. Again. Uh, just trying to experiment and play around with this. So I want it to be a circle, so I'll keep that the same. Uh, yeah, let's let's see what that looks like. So now these circles should be kind of pulsating. Yeah, they're getting bigger in size. You know, moving it around. You know, and they get really small actually. So uh, maybe that's too small, and and. And that's because we're starting at cell size divided by two, and then we're we're going down all the way to. In this case, it'll go down negative cell size. So maybe that's maybe that's actually um, too much of a change. Maybe it should be negative four or divided by four. Um, again, you can play around with this. Right now, everything is moving kind of together because theta is the same value. It's only being changed here. But you could you could throw a randomness in here, or, or you could throw an i, or even like maybe lo uh, loc and you could multiply it by a value like you could I'm gonna just do it with loc uh, so that should offset things um, and maybe I'll make actually maybe I'll start with cell size and then it just kind of gets a little bit smaller oh theta what happened theta okay made a little mistake now let's look at this okay so now it's moving around I think now it probably won't get super small um, yeah, it looks like it's still there. Yeah, so this is you know another uh, possibility, something you could do uh, if we wanted to add in. Hmm, maybe we want to add a little bit of noise or something. We could put noise here. Uh, I'm gonna add. I'm gonna need to add T here, uh, and maybe we'll we'll say like cell size times two. I'm trying to use variables that are kind of embedded in here. I want to make that variable t up there and also increment it. Uh, plus, we'll try a 0.02. Um, let's see what that looks like. Our, this should kind of move the, the pieces up and down a little bit. There we go. There's a little bit of movement there. Uh, again, if I, because this is only being incremented right there, uh, this the noise value is the same um, for all of these but if you wanted to you could put in plus loc or something to offset it or plus i or plus j um, 
and I think this will give it a little bit more unevenness. Um, maybe they'll they'll look a little bit more independent. Uh, so they're flying, sort of circle, circle pixels. All right. So this is something you can try, maybe taking some of the code from image processing and bringing it to video uh, and playing around with that. One last thing I wanted to show is if you don't want that video to, sh to be in the background, um, you do need to run, run the video here. You do need to call it as in the image, uh, but you could put a background on it. And that's what I did here to kind of cover it up um, so that if you didn't want to see that photographic image behind it, you could put an, any color background or something. And you know that that makes it look maybe more abstract. So as I've mentioned, using video can be pretty resource intensive. Uh, in the past few sketches, I uh, one way to get around it is to to call the video at a smaller resolution. Um, but if I'm doing something that's pretty graphic, or I'm trying to do some image processing or or mirroring here. Um, Maybe what I want to do is sample a, a really small video, but then kind of create a bigger video. And this lets me uh, export larger assets, or you know, if I if I'm projecting something, I can get it at a, at a higher quality. So I wanted to just go over uh, really briefly how you might go about doing that. So this is another example from learning processing. Uh, the first part should look familiar. Import the library. Uh, we're going to use an integer here called video scale, and what we're going to use that to kind of blow things up. Uh, we're going to use columns and rows again, just like the previous example. We have this uh, capture video. Uh, we've, did, we've called it video uh, capture object. Um, I'm going to use 960 by 540, and I'm going to use a pixel density of 2 to get a higher resolution um, image. We've used this in the past. Um, we'll create columns by using width divided by video scale in this uh, in this particular example, um, and then we're going to create a new capture. And you can see it's a really small um, uh, size, 80 by 45, because we're we're kind of just sampling, you know, a, a few different areas. We don't need to get you know every single pixel. Um, remember to put the camera that you want to use inside of quotes here, and we'll start the video. We have this capture event, which I've talked about before uh, and we'll load the pixels in the draw so inside of here we're going to be uh, running this for loops we'll go through um, we're going to use columns again as as our sort of marker um, and what we'll do is we'll take uh, the, the column value which in this case is I or and the rows value um, and we'll multiply by the video scale to get the actual X and Y value inside of our sketch. Now this is this is talking about our sketch that we're drawing to. This is not the video itself, uh, but when we go into the video, what we're doing when we're sampling the pixels array, we're not using X and Y. We're using I and J, which are much smaller numbers. You know, and, and if you think about it, uh, you know you can see it's 80, the the range is 80 and 45. So these numbers will never um, go outside of the array value. But we're doing this, uh, and we're, we're grabbing video dot width, not width of the sketch that we're doing. So this will enable us to kind of get that, um, or if you remember that loc, uh, the integer value that like array index. And by grabbing that color or using the index, we're we're, use, we're using a fill here and. Uh, we're, we'll be drawing here, and, and the size of each of these uh, grid markers is going to be the video scale. So just to show you what that looks like, um, here we go. Uh, and again, we have this grid. If you want to play around with this, you could turn the stroke off, right, and do all do all those things that we did earlier. But I just wanted to give you uh, one more example uh, because you might want to grab higher quality assets using video, and this is a way to do it. Uh, to have it kind of run quickly too. If you were doing this with a, with a full size video, you might see some lag.